Hello, my Tubies, my Teletubbies. Good morning. This is Sheila True Love. If you are new to my channel, it's nice to meet you. Like I said, my name is Sheila True Love, and it's great to have you here. And as for my uh, Tubies, who are my regulars and my subscribers, I love you very much, and I appreciate your support always. Uh, for the newcomers, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that little bell, the notification bell, so you'll know when I post a new video again. It's really nice to meet you. And today's topic for discussion or for conversation, because you can leave your comments, is why I say good men are hard to find. And I am going to let you hear why I feel the way I feel. And I first want to start off by saying, no, I do not hate men. I do not male bash because there are so many men, and I use the word men uh, freely, who I admire and who I look up to and who I really, really appreciate. And the first one is L Majesty. You can check out his channel. It's L dash M A um, J E S T Y. I love him, appreciate him, admire him because I think he's an excellent role model. He's always, uh, he, he understands the concept of what love is. Love is when you look out for the best interests of others and when you know how to make sacrifices. And he understands that. He's always put me in the mind of a Christ-like person anyway. And that's not to say he don't have his demons to battle because trust me when I tell you, Tubies, I know him personally, and he has his demons to battle. At the same time, he is on God and Jesus Christ's team. Now, the other man I admire and appreciate incredibly is Jay Shetty. S-H-E-T-T-Y. J. J-A-Y. Yeah, this man, look at his videos. Everything he says is Christ-like, the way humans are supposed to treat each other. Everything he says is so uplifting and so positive. I like Dr. Umar Johnson. I like him too, because he's he's he believes in looking out for his own and 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 being supportive of his own nation, his own race of women. And I like that. I admire him very much. In fact, if I were to reconsider and ever think about marriage again, he would be the type of man I would want. Dr. Umar Johnson. I know a lot of people have their issues with him, but uh, different strokes for different folks. I like Doc Reed. I love, love, love Coach Rod. As countrified as he is, because he is definitely a little countrified, you know, but he he lost his daughter due to domestic violence. And he also, I mean, he lost his sister due to domestic violence. And he has a daughter. So he does nothing but try to guide women, especially women who didn't have fathers in their homes, you know, women have no excuse of using that anymore about we didn't have fathers to guide us and all of this and that. No, those excuses are done. Okay. Because God and Christ has heard our prayers and that's why we have people like this coming out. You already know how I feel about Derek Jackson, J A X N love him, love him. I also admire, um, uh, let me see Robert Blake. <laughs> I love him. He is like the father that so many of us need. What is the father going to do? They're going to sit you down. They're going to talk to you about how to deal with these guys, these dudes out here. I'm reluctant to use the word man because <laughs> that's so hard to find. Like I said, the title, <laughs> good men are so hard to find. So Charles Stanley, I love him. He's on God's team, Jesus team. Carlos de Jesus, love him. Derek Jackson, as you know, even MJ Harris, he's a bit extreme. At the same time, he's trying to school women on the games that dudes are playing out here. Okay. Who else do I really admire? That's just to name a few of the men who I admire. So you can't say, oh, she's just a man. I love Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, he keeps it real with you. He's, 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 he's just totally great. You know, I think he's been married for 40 years or something like that. Him and his wife, they have their own lives. You know, they have a very healthy marriage where she has her friends, he has her, she he has his. They, 
go on separate vacations. They do things, they, they have a very healthy marriage as far as I'm concerned because he's not her be all to end all and vice versa, it's healthy. So I am sharing this with you because I want you to listen to Momo. This is a teenage prostitute, she's 14, 14 years old. And who is gonna be laying up with 14 year olds? These type of dudes who encourage women to prostitute, encourage women to degrade themselves in, through porno. And you have so many dudes who are like this. And I just want you to share this experience with share this experience with me and listen in on Momo. This is from Soft White Underbelly. And they have, oh my God, it's it's too much. Anyway, without further ado, here is Momo. My and child. You're still, you're, how old are you? I'm 14. You're 14, so yes. you're still a child. Yeah, still a child. <laughs> how how is your childhood? It's hard. It's not well, I can't say it's hard, but it's what, difficult. What, what kind of pressures do you have as a 14-year-old growing up in 2020 um, in South Central? It's good. It's all right, but it's not all good. It's not good because when I go back home, I got to go on the street and go hoe and stuff. But when I'm at school, it's a whole different person, you know? And people don't know like that. And I don't have friends like that. I don't talk to people like that at school. So it's just like... So they don't know their friends of yours at school that are doing this? No, my friends, I don't know about them. I just go to school. But I go to school away from my home. I go to school in, I go to high, to high school. Oh, so you're, you're yes. going to school far away from home. Yes, I don't go to school by home because so if what, I go... To, what got you attracted to this? Um, When I was younger, when I was younger, I was living with my granny on 46th in Balong. And she, she was a, she used to do drugs and everything. So she would come out, I was embarrassed by her because she would come outside and I, I was already old enough to know things. I was like 11, 10. Yeah. I was already knowing about stuff like that. Cause my uncles, they come in the house with guns and money, all type of stuff. And my granny, she would do drugs at the middle of the night, but in the morning she'd be regular. But at nighttime she would come back to a whole other person. But in the morning she would wake up in the morning off of drugs. She, I remember she would run outside and um, oh, I'm not trying to cry, but she went outside and then she had, like, she had, all her clothes would be off, like everything. My friends used to be able to see it all. And I used to be like, dang, like she would come outside and was naked, naked, talking about some snake on her, it's a snake on her. And I'd be like, no, it's like, I tell my friends, like, every time I go back to school, I tell my friends, oh, she just be tripping, like she got a problem or stuff. She have a medical problem and stuff. And I tell them that and she'd come back in the house, but she like, she was going crazy on us and say it's a snake on her all the time in the kitchen. And we used to be like, it's not a snake on her. And then mom used to tell my, that's all my mom started telling me like about she, she do drugs and stuff. And that's why I started knowing about drugs. But I didn't put myself to it until I met my boyfriend, until I met this boyfriend. And then this is when I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade, I met a boyfriend. And he was like, how old was he? 19. Yes, he was 19. And I was, how, I was like 13. Yeah, 13. And then... Now, let's think about that. A 13-year-old with a 19-year-old. Now, don't you think that's pretty messed up? That is so messed up. We, as, a, as a, a society, we need to call this what it is, you know? All we can do is hope that she finds the right support. You know, uh, no child ever should have to be in this situation. A 19-year-old with a 13-year-old. And look at how he treated her. He every day he'll come get me every day after school, but he never he, he was acting real nice. He was real nice when I first met him, real nice, like a regular boyfriend. But I didn't know about boyfriends and stuff until he he told me he liked me and he wanted to date me. So after that, that's when um I went to school. One day he came and got me after school, and he was telling me about Figueroa and how girls be out there. But I live after I moved from um forty six in Buffalo, we went to Vegas, but we came back to L A. And then we was on um, Fig and 75th. This is where my granny used to live. And we used to always stay with her. And my mom, me and my mom and my sister stayed with her. And then that's when he came and got me one day. But I'm already knowing about um, Fig because I live on Fig and 75th. So you see it? Yes, I see everything out there. I walk to the corner store where my cousins get food and I see girls. So I felt like, I was like, oh, they say they make money. So I'm in my head before he even came in, before I even met him, I'm already knowing about, oh, it's fig. It's a lot of girls that be out there. They make a lot of money. So I, I'm wanting to do it. So I'm, I'm in my head wanting to do it. My cousin's like, don't do that. I didn't listen to them. I'm like, I don't care about what y'all talking about. So 
this is why I met him. And then he was telling me about Fig and everything. So that's when he had told me, look, I was walking to school with another boy, but I wasn't like, I didn't know nothing about boyfriend or girlfriend. I wasn't trying to be on a weird stuff, trying to be another boy. I was walking with the other boy and he socked me in front of all my friends, like literally in front of all my friends. And I was crying and everything. And then he, I went outside the, um, I was walking outside, so I called my mom, but I couldn't call my mom in a hurry. So he put me in a car and told me, oh, you're going to go on Figueroa and you're going to hope for me. You're going to give me back the money and everything. So I'm just thinking like, what can I do? I can't tell my mom and everything. So I just did it. I went out there and when I had did it, I was so scared, but I wasn't, I wasn't too scared to the point I, I couldn't do it, but I was scared. Like I just got socked in front of my friends. So what, what they're going to probably come back to me telling me stuff like what was going on with you like i wanted to pause there for a brief moment and show you why it's so important to have communication in your household i remember my son-in-law how he was so shocked when he saw how i ran my household in terms of we used to have family meetings every saturday that's where we would go on the clock each person had to say talk about their day and how their how things were going and we did that every saturday or almost every saturday and when my son-in-law saw that, he was like, wow, you people actually talk to each other? Because me and my family, we don't really talk to each other like that. We don't, you know? It's so important for parents to communicate with their children so they can know what's going on with their children. It's very, very important. I may not have been a perfect parent, but as far as I'm concerned, and from what Jesus Christ has made clear to me, I was a great parent. I wasn't a good parent. I was a great parent, especially being a single parent doing a job I didn't even sign on for. I didn't sign on to be nobody's single parent. But thanks to Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, hey, my children turned out pretty good. They don't, you know how people be is. So then I when I went out there, I was scared, but I got two guys, like two guys. And then they wanted me to suck their dick and stuff. So I had did that. But then I only got a little bit of money. Like, I, how much do you have? Like $50? I had $50. And I, I know about Figueroa and all that stuff. So I came back to him. He saw me. He came and got me. But I realized he had other girls working for him. So I'm looking at them and it was, it was calling my name, but I didn't know. Like, I never met them. Like, I guess he told them me, told them about me. So I went to them. And they was telling me, oh, he going to get mad at you. Don't give him that. Don't give him $50. He going to beat you. And I didn't listen to him. So I just went in the car and he just started beating me. I went back home the same day after he dropped me off. He dropped me off on the corner. And he was like, um, he was like, tomorrow I'm going to come get you again. And I was like, uh-uh. Like, I'm thinking in my head, like, no, like, I'm scared and stuff. I didn't want to tell my mom. So I came back home, but I was still, I was bleeding. Like, I, had, I had, uh, my eye was bruised and my nose was busted. And my lip was busted. And I went in the house and I told my mom I got into a fight with a girl. So she wouldn't like think I was out there. But I was surprised that they didn't see me because we live on the same street. So that's when um he came and got me the same day after school. I catch the bus to go to school by myself. And he'll come get me after school. But he'd be out there like just posting in front of my school. Post out of nowhere. And my friends would be like looking and stuff. And I'd just be like, oh yeah, it's just my friend. It's just my friend. And it was like, no, because he socked you the other day. And I just, I just stopped talking. That broke me off with all my friends. I didn't have no more friends after that because they found like they, they was like, uh, uh, she not listening to us. So that's when he kept recently, like kept, like just kept having me going on the street. But I kept coming back with a little bit of money because I didn't know like into the girls. I started listening to the girls that was telling me I came back with a little bit of money, and he hit, he beat me again. Like he was just beating me. And so I, you were working. Figaro every, every... Yes, like every day, every basically. School. Yes, after school. Like, I have to... He gave me some clothes to put on. He gave me some clothes. He'd go to the trunk, give me a club, some clothes and some sandals. And that's how I really start... That's how I'm, now I'll be wearing sandals. So what what do you think got you into this, doing this? Because because I started seeing other females on, the, on fake. You've been and seeing I, other girls? Yes, and that would make me want to do it. And then you, had, you got involved in it. Yes. And, and it I, turned out to be a parent. Yes, and that's how... I, that's, how, that's crazy how God works because that's crazy how I was looking at it like, oh yeah, I should do that. Then, how much money were you making? I don't know where I was making like, when I, when I really started knowing about how much money I'm supposed to make, I was making like $200, 300, 400 one day, like $500, like about that amount, like 200 to 500. That's how much money I was making. You were at home? Yes. Like I was like, 
Oh, you said how old I was? I was 13, yes, 13. 13. And you're still, you're still doing it. Now think about that. Any, all these men, I'm not going to say men, these guys, these dudes, these cockroaches who are involving themselves with a child, tell me they don't need to have that, I'm a curse, that ass beat. They need to have their ass whipped. We got to sit back and say, Jesus, take the will. Because when I first listened to this, my eyes just teared up. I teared up and I said a quick prayer to Jehovah through Jesus Christ in her behalf. And that's all we can do. That's why it's important to make videos like this. And I'm glad uh, Soft White Underbelly do these type of videos along with AML Films because you see these people's lives. And when people see these videos, people pray for them. Prayers are going up to Jehovah, Yahweh, through Jesus, Yeshua. Prayers, many prayers are being, they're being, Jesus and Jehovah are being bombarded with prayers for these people. And that's all we pretty much can do for them is pray for them. And when I look at a lot of these videos, the first thing I do is I pause it and I pray for them. And, and I'm so happy that they have such videos like these because you learn a lot. And it's not just because you don't have fathers in the home, because you have a lot of the videos when you listen to them, some of them had fathers, great dads who was loving, kind, attentive, all the above, and they still went wayward. So it's not always about because I don't have a father in the home. It's about nature. You can't change a person's nature. Nature versus nurture. Psychologists are still debating that, whether it's your nature or is it nurture the way you were brought up? Because they did studies of twins in several different homes, raised in the same house, the same environment. One kid turned out bad and the other kid turned out good because that's in their nature. You see, it takes God to change a person's nature. You could be an amazing parent. And if it's in a child's nature to be rotten and no good, disrespectful, don't honor their parents, if that's in their nature, there's nothing you can do about it. And don't beat yourself up. Don't listen to their blame game nonsense because you have two people in the same home. One turns out good, one turns out bad. That makes it clear that it wasn't your fault. That's in their nature. But I, like I said, it is any man who would involve themselves with children and encourage women to prostitute and watching porno. Those are people who need to be castrated, if you want my view. Okay? And that will put an end to a lot of this mess. At 14? Yes, I'm trying, yes. Are you working with a pimp still? No, I'm not working with the same pimp no more. I thought, because he, one day, what day was that? He came and got me and he was like, oh, I'm going to be moving somewhere and all type of stuff. Talk about making up lies. Just making up lies. I'm already know he's lying. Talk about I'm moving. I'm, I'm not going to see you no more. So then I start thinking to myself, I'm going to make the money by myself. So now I'm working by myself. like just making the money by myself because he left. So I don't know what happened to him. So. And, and your mom doesn't step in and say, you know. Yes, my mom stepped in all the time. That's what heart, break my heart. Like, it break my heart because she stepped in and told me to stop. And I, I will stop, but like, I'm addicted to it now, so I can't stop. And I, I, cause I, cause I met your mom and she wants the best for you. Yeah, my granny too. Everybody do. Yeah, your whole and family. Then, and my auntie, she do it. So I, I feel like I'm comfortable with doing it, but I'm not because mama told me to stop. But I've been stop. I've been trying to stop lately. But yesterday I stopped. Like I didn't go yesterday. Like I just stopped. I just stopped going for like a week. Like this week I stopped going. But I felt this yesterday. I went out at nighttime, but I came back in the house. But I didn't make no money or nothing. I just came back what, in the house. What kind of guys pick you up? It was a um some Mexican guy. It was a Mexican guy and but a they, black but guy. The guys are nice to you, or they're no. Mean some one of them was nice, but he was trying to force me to do stuff with him that I didn't want to do with him. Like. But I did it, and then I was feeling bad. But I didn't. He didn't give me no money, so I just walked in the house. And I was just crying and every type of stuff. I was just crying. I mean, it's a very dangerous lifestyle. Yeah. It really what, is. what do you think about your self worth or your your? I feel like I feel like I shouldn't do it, but. but what, what 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 makes it okay in your head to do it? I don't know. Seeing other girls on the street, and I just feel like. And you look up to them. Yeah, I just feel like I should do it like that. Yeah, and I'm a, I just like I'm addicted to it. I need to. Yeah. There's something very attractive about the lifestyle. For, yeah, it is. Women. It is like it's a, it's attractive with attention. Like you, a lot of people see you. It's like this the attention. Really, to me, I feel like it's the attention. Like 
when I saw, and they look at me, I'd be like, oh, I feel, I'm insecure myself. I feel like I'm not beautiful. I, I don't think I'm cute or nothing like that. I try. And then when I'm out there, it's like people come to me and all type of stuff. And they say I'm beautiful and all type of stuff. And that it make me happy. But I get it from my family too, but it don't feel, I don't feel the same way how I feel out there, you know? Right. Now you heard what she said. She gets the attention from her family, but that's not good enough. And when you look at a lot of a lot of these videos, a lot of these females did get attention from their dad. He was great. He was all the above, if you will. But you have some people in this life who are attention addicts. It's never enough. They're like bottomless pits. The more you pour it in, it just pours right, right back out. Now, for me to diagnose those type of people, I haven't been able to yet. I'm doing my research because, as you know, my favorite, my I'm a my, I'm very passionate. My passion is reading, research writing and coaching people. Those are my four passions. At the same time, I, I don't die. I don't know how to diagnose people who are attention starved, attention addicts enough. You can never give them enough. I know several people like that who are just attention addicts. They're a sucker when it comes to men. They're not happy. They can't be happy or feel like they're worth anything unless some man is in the picture. Unless some dude, not even a man, a dude, a guy is telling them you're worth something. How many females out there today can literally raise their hand and say, I can be happy without a man. I'm going to say man without a man in my life. How many of you honestly feel like you're worth, know your worth without having a man to tell you this? I have a very healthy self-esteem. I recently got through uh, speaking with two psychologists. I don't do social workers or therapists and counselors anymore. I like psychologists because they really focus on the human mind. And after the interview, after them doing three sessions apiece, a man and a woman, they both said, I'm well adjusted. I have a very healthy self-esteem. My confidence is definitely to be admired. I seem to be very focused and I am. So I'm just grateful to my heavenly father and Jesus Christ that after all the things that I've been through, as we all have been through so much, I have been traumatized, literally traumatized. But I pray to Jehovah, please, Father, don't let this world change me. Don't let this world harden my heart. Because when you have a hardened heart, your heart is corrupt. And when your heart is corrupt, then you no longer have an honest heart and the Holy Spirit can't reveal things to you. The Holy Spirit helps you to see things that other people can't see. It helps you to understand things that other people can't. So it's important for you, like the Bible says, to protect your heart of all things. You can't let what happened to you in life harden your heart or cause your heart to become corrupt because then you lose out when it comes to the Holy Spirit. So you have to protect yourself at all times. And the way to do that is to always do your Bible reading and, um, do your daily devotional and research, like read the topic on your daily devotional, research that. And always read the Proverbs of the day so you can remain being wise. 31 days in a month, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. Like today is the 21st, Sunday, February 21st. So I'll be reading Proverbs chapter 21. And this is how you keep yourself spiritually upbuilt so that the devil, our enemy, can't get the best of us. Cause you know, Satan, the devil, he's looking to steal, kill and destroy. So you have to be careful. Your dad's not giving it to you. My dad. Yeah. I don't, I don't have my dad in my life. Like my sister, dad died. And I just feel like, I don't got no father figure. Like I just feel like he was just a bird donor. I saw him at the end of the day, but yeah. If you, had a dad, you probably wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, that's my mom, mom told me that too. She was like, if he was in your life, you would not do this. But he gave me money for my love. You know how people like give you money just for them, just that. But that's how I feel like outside on the street, they give me money just for that. Like just to have sex and do all this stuff. And my dad just gave me money just for he to act like he loved me. He don't. Like he just gave me money. He every time I call him, he act like he wanna to talk to me. He don't want to talk to me. He, the first thing he says, Oh, do you need some money? So that's where I, that's how I get money hungry. And that's when I start asking for more money. And I, but I still, I feel like I'm still there. Like I still, if I could be able to save my money up, then I could be able to do other things in life. But what I, I do hair. I always do people hair. I do people hair on the street. 
I do whole hair all the time. My big come to my house and I do the hair. Mom be looking like mom be disappointed, but I'm doing hair for money. Well, she'll take the money and put it up for me. But I appreciate mom for that because I still got money put up at the end of the day if I don't have no money in the world, like, you know? But you ever been arrested? Yeah, yes. Plenty of times. Heck yes, what plenty of times. What do with a 14-year-old girl who's working the they, they was just, they took me home. They didn't take me to jail. They never take me to jail. They always take me home. But they said that when it's going to affect me when I get older because I got all these jail warnings and stuff. And it's going to affect me. But we've been to the county building. They said they're going to let me, like, they're going to let, I'm on probation or nothing like that. They just said they're going to try to work with me and try to tell me to stop doing this because I got arrested, like, how many times? Five times for prostituting because they called me on the street with other girls and they'd come get us. And I'm I in Berlin, um arrested when I was 13. I used to hang out with my friends and we used to go driving around the cars, but they didn't have license, you know? And we used to be driving and one day I was driving a car and then I got pulled over and I, I had got, went to the thing, but I didn't go to jail because I'm young. So uh, they just always take me home. But they told, every time I go to the county building, um, not the county building, the uh, court place, and they tell me everything. They said I need to work on it because if I, when I get older, it could affect me. Like I'm be, I could be in jail for more than what I think or whatever. So yeah, that's what's going on. Are, right are drugs a part of your life? Yes. You said drugs? Yeah. Yes. I've been, I, I've been on drugs before. I was, um, when I was 14, after, after he had put me in his car, everything, he was telling me to try, try crack cocaine, crack. And then I tried crystal too. But I really smoke weed. I don't, I never, when I was 13, I never smoked like stuff like that until I met him. Because your, your pimp was giving you. Yes, he was giving me drugs. And that's, what, that's another thing that made me um, think that I was okay because I was doing drugs and the drugs take over me. Yeah. And I'd be out there acting crazy. One day he gave me a, a, a what's that? Um, what's, it's a, a acid. Acid, take it. And I was so, one, that day I was so happy. I was just making a lot of money. I was just with my friends. And then one day I did a threesome with my other two friends. And I was thinking like, uh, uh I was so scared. And I, that day I went home. I just went home. And there are other girls your age doing this? Yes, like 13, yes, 12. It's, not, it's a girl I know It's 12, but I think she lying. I don't know if she's 12 or, I don't know. I can't believe nobody out there, really. I can't trust nobody out there. Cause I yeah, I recall my, uh, my son telling me when he used to work at Planned Parenthood, one of the things that really broke his heart, he had to actually leave the front and go in the back to pull himself together. To, 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 to fix his disposition, there was a 10 year old girl. She stepped up to the window and she said, I'm here to kill my baby. She was there for an abortion. She was 10 years old for God's sake. And then you wonder why I say, why? I mean, good men are hard to find. What kind of dude would sit up here and knock up a 10 year old child? And she's pregnant and she's at Planned Parenthood uh, to get an abortion. This is crazy. Now, even listening to this young lady, I'm sure that she could be anything that she likes to be. And what she needs is direction. She needs a, well, first of all, she needs God in Christ. She needs somebody who's able to sit down and have a Bible study with her. Someone who can give her the proper direction. She needs a mentor and she needs guidance. She's very intelligent at the age of 14. She's an intelligent young lady and she has the right. She has the right to be, be something. I wish I could grab this girl and hug her, but all I can do at this point, and with a lot of these people, all you can do is pray for them, because sometimes you try to help them, and 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 you they pull you, they try to they hurt you, they steal from you, they rob you. They, I mean, really. So all we can do is pray, and and the more prayers that she get, the more God is hearing her. I don't know, cause one day I got into, I got jumped one day by a couple of girls, because they said that I was looking at they pimp or something like that, but they pimp actually was looking at me like he was trying, he was trying to have me go with them, and they, I got jumped one day, and that's the day I got um, you see a scar right here, in my face, it's a scar right here, but it was deep, like it was, I got um, they kicked me in my face, I had, I went to the hospital and I had bumps on my head, everything, and I started. That's after I stopped because I started getting scared. I was like, uh -uh, I'm not trying to get um, out there and get jumped no more and stuff. But I was just going with the flow. I was just going with. It. I just kept doing it, and I was just like, and I felt like it took over me. But I still did my hair, but it took over me. Like I can't even do the things I want to do. My friends, because I want to go on the street so bad. Like that. So I mean, you, no you, you want to do it.
You know, this is the it's it's obvious here that she equates getting money with being loved. So it's like she's addicted to the lifestyle. And you have a lot of people who are who who are, use drugs and when it comes to kicking the drugs they they could kick the drugs it's the lifestyle that they become addicted to like a lot of these dudes out here they are crackheads or crystal meth heads or heroin addicts and they seem to be addicted to the way they could just dog women treat women badly got women out here prostituting making home porn of them they're addicted to that more than the drug and personally, those type of dudes and guys and cockroaches and hood rats and trailer trash, gutter trash, they deserve to stay stuck on drugs. I had to put an end to this because it's over 30 minutes. I just wanted to share this with you to let you see why I say good men are hard to find. Because it's these dudes out here who are encouraging women to do this. Men are supposed to be the leaders. They're supposed to be taking the spiritual lead and they're not doing their job. Okay. You fathers go on bringing up your children in the, in the proper way and guiding them spiritually. That's what Ephesians says. Ephesians chapter six, you know, they have the God given authority, the God given authority to guide women and children. And that's why it may seem like I'm a little harder on the, on the dudes, the guys, than. I, I don't let women off the hook. No, I don't. Because a man can't treat you no worse than what you let him treat you. And women have got to learn that. You have got to stop. He cheat on you. He put his hand on you. That should be the last time. That should be the last time. You are an enabler. And when you are an enabler, you don't love that man. No, you don't. You're codependent. You're afraid of, you, you think that being single means being alone and it doesn't. That's what friends and family is for, people you can share your life with. Good things happen, you share it with them. Bad things, you share it with them. You have friends and family for that, you know. But women have got to start putting their foot down. Put your feet, foot, whatever. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato, whatever. Put your foot down, honey. No, no. This is 2021. And when it comes to being a, a sucker for men and letting them manipulate you, we have got to put a stop to that, ladies. So you're not off the hook. I don't let you off the hook. At the same time, when a, 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 the authorities come on a ship, they're not going to try to go for the crew. They're going after the captains. And that's the way Jesus Christ sees it too. He's going after these captains, which is the men. He's going to be way harder on them because like the Bible says, when more is given to you, more is expected from you. And the way these dudes are leading women and children, it's disgusting. Upon that note, 